Good morning and greetings, Plymouth family, and welcome to this time of worship with our church, the Jazz and Justice Church. Welcome to all who are joining on Zoom. Can we all say hello to our Zoom family? Hello. Welcome to all who are here in the sanctuary with us. If you're joining us for the first time today, or if we haven't had a chance to meet, I'm Reverend Jean Jeffress, and I'm Reverend Marjorie Matthews, and we are blessed to serve as the pastors of this beloved community. We give thanks to God for this time when we get to gather like this, and we lean more fully into the Holy One's presence and into each other's company that we might be strengthened and uplifted and connected anew, reminded of who we are and whose we are. Today we're celebrating communion and in our church and in our denomination, the communion table is a reminder that we belong to God and that we belong to each other and that there is a place for each of us, for all of us at this table, at this table of welcome. If you're with us on Zoom, if you, um, if you haven't already done so, uh, we invite you now to take a moment and go get your bread or your crackers or your water, or your juice, and set your own communion table at home so that when we celebrate, you can celebrate with us. And we'll be celebrating later in the service. Amen? Amen. So we're going to enter worship today, singing the, the hymn, Be Now My Vision. It says, Be now my vision, O God of my heart. May this time of worship open even more fully the eyes of our hearts. Come, let us worship God. The words are in your bulletin, and we'll post them on Zoom, and Dave will lead us. surpasses the love you impart you my best thought by day or by night waking or sleeping your presence my life be now my wisdom and be my true word Ever within me, my soul is assured. Mother, the rock and father, you are both to me. Now and forever, your child I will be. Riches. I need not, nor life's empty praise. You my inheritance, now and always. You and you only are first in my heart. Great God, my treasure, may we never part. Sovereign of heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joys, bright heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. That's from the eighth century, the melody. Oh my That's heavens. That's what it says. It feels old, but I didn't know it was that old, you all. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Mm. 
we can take a moment and just let that sink into our spirits. Ah. As we continue in worship, I invite you to take a moment to just let yourself settle in and center down. Let yourself fully arrive here. If you want to take a moment and just put a gentle hand on yourself. Maybe take a breath or two and close your eyes if you want to close your eyes. and joining our hearts now in prayer. Heart of our own hearts is how the song names you, O oh God. Heart of our own hearts, we gather this day by the light of your love. For your love, O oh God, has illuminating power it shows us the way, returns us time and again to that guiding question, that illuminating question. What can we do and what can we say? How can our words and how can our actions testify time and again to your unending love? Your love that welcomes us all, upends all our expectations and overturns all our conventions reaches out to the least loved among us, reaches into the least loved places inside us, and says, you are welcome here. Come, beloved, have a seat, be at home. You are welcome here. Trusting in the love that welcomes us here, we claim anew the words of the psalmist, and I invite all of you to join me in those words from Psalm 46, verse 10, repeating each line after me. Be still and know that God is God. Be still and know that God is Be still and know. Be still and know. Be still. Be.
pull it off the mic. Plymouth Choir. Thank you. And you, ex you expanded this week, which is beautiful to see as well. Good job. So please join me now as we claim anew those words that are so precious to us in the United Church of Christ. No matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And in that spirit of welcome, I invite you first to pass the peace to yourself, laying a gentle hand on yourself and saying, peace be with me. And now thinking of our entire beloved community, everyone gathered here in the sanctuary and on Zoom and joining us in other ways, reach out your hands and say, peace be with you. And if you're worshiping with us for the first or second time, I'd like to extend an especially warm welcome. Thank you for joining our Plymouth family for today. For those of you who are here in the sanctuary, I invite you to find a welcome card if you'd like. This kind of card is a way for you to give your email address or contact information if you'd like to learn more about our church or have one of our pastoral staff reach out to you. And if you're on Zoom, there may be a uh, form that gets put into the chat, although we may be short on Zoom hosts right now, which is, <laughs> I should get into a grace note announcement that we would like Zoom hosts, but I'll save that for later. <laughs> So if you're worshiping with us on Zoom, now you'll have a few minutes to pass the peace to each other in breakout rooms. So the Zoom host will send you into those rooms and you can chat for each other, check in with each other. And if you're here in the sanctuary, you can rise and greet each other. If you're erring on the side of caution and don't wanna hug or shake hands, you can do elbow bumps or um, air hugs. In gratitude for each other and for the spirit that unites us, let us greet each other with a sign of peace. Hello again. So for Grace Notes today, we have three brief announcements to share, and they go in order of date. So announcement number one, in recent Sundays, whenever we've gathered here in the sanctuary, one of the children will seek out Pastor Marjorie and ask, are we having cake today? <laughs> Guess what? Today we are. So. We are not yet resuming fellowship on a regular basis, but every once in a while, people really chip in and make a fellowship hour happen, and that is today. So we're having cake and coffee and tea in honor of our new associate pastor, Reverend Jean. So we'll gather out in the courtyard right after worship, and we'll have communion, and then we'll have cake, so there's lots of carbs available today. <laughs> So you're welcome to stay and enjoy the sweet treat in a time of fellowship to meet and talk to each other. And they, that is thanks to Linda and Dale Koistinen who are coordinating fellowship hour today. So it's wonderful of them to do that. So announcement number two is that our annual congregational meeting is happening on next Sunday. So next Sunday, we will also stay later and have that congregational meeting um, July 23rd. And we're going to be all going to be on Zoom for that Sunday. So that'll be easier uh, for us all to stay on Zoom and then stay for that meeting. So it'll take place right after worship around noon. And it's a very important meeting because we'll be electing our new church council and approving our new budget. And we're also hearing an update from the group that's been researching the idea of building affordable housing on our church property. So in order to make it easier, we will be on Zoom. And it's also a gentle reminder that while we are welcome to it, while all of you are welcome to attend the annual meeting, only those who are official voting members of the church can vote on the budget and the new church council. So please add it to your calendar if you haven't already, next Sunday, July 23rd at noon. And then announcement number three, the final announcement for today is that as many of us have already heard, our dear Opal and Elijah are leaving the Bay Area and relocating to Maryland. It is for a good reason for Opal to be near their family, but we're all very sad about it. So their last Sunday will be with us in, to be with us in person will be August 6th. 
that Sunday will also, also happens to be Opal's birthday. So it would be perfect time to celebrate Opal and then Elijah's birthday, which follows right after. So we're going to have a combination of birthday party and farewell party for Opal and Elijah on Sunday, August 6th, right after worship. We hope that all of you will be able to join us in person on Sunday as we say goodbye to Opal and Elijah and celebrate their birthdays. And that, dear Plymouth family, is all for Grace Notes. Thank you. Come on in the room, Holy Spirit. Somebody definitely needs it. And that's why we have our prayer time in service every Sunday. 
We have prayers of the community when we share with God and each other the prayers of our hearts, our joys and sorrows, our hopes and yearnings. We enter this time with a moment of quiet so that we can open ourselves more fully to the presence of God, so that we can gather our prayers. And after we've had this quiet moment, this stillness, I'll invite those of you in the sanctuary who would like to share a prayer to share, and I'll bring the microphone to you. And those of you on Zoom, and I invite you to put your prayers in the chat, and we will get to some of those as well. So let's begin with a moment of quiet. Are there those who would like to share some prayers? Oh, beloved, in thanksgiving for the 150 volunteers that came to Hoover Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and built a magnificent gift for all the children who are going to be ecstatic when they see it and they repainted the school it is gorgeous and thanksgiving for all that amen god of good works hear our prayers prayers for my cousin cassie's husband who um, recently had a rollover accident in minnesota and was in uh, the ICU and on a ventilator. He's now off the ventilator, but still having uh, a lot of memory issues. So prayers for his speedy recovery. God of healing, hear our prayers. I mourn the, the passing of Andre Watts, one of the great pianists, concert pianists of our lifetime, who was very influential on me and made me rethink about classical music. God of God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Oh. Heavenly Spirit, please open the hearts of the leaders, not only in our country, but around the world to to go to really stand for peace and not war to stand for inclusion and not separation to stand for the rights of all people thank you amen heavenly father we just want to thank you today for this day that you've given us this beautiful day um father i i ask that you are with ashley's family and grandmother at this time as her grandmother was diagnosed with um leukemia recently and we ask that you place your healing hands over her and um, by your stripes we are healed in jesus name amen god of justice and god of healing hear our prayers Oh God, I offer prayers for my brother-in-law, Paul, who is in and out of ICU and having some systemic failures. May he be surrounded by the love of his family and be at peace and pain-free. God of healing, hear our prayers. Oh. Mother, Father, God, help us to open our eyes to see that we don't have to depend on legislation or anybody else but you to stop the gun violence that is happening in this country, to stop children being shot on the freeway, 
to stop mothers knocking on doors from being shot. Please help us, each and every one of us, to open our eyes and put our faith in you. God of courage and movement, hear our prayers. And I will come to the Zoom prayers now. Gracious God, prayers for all who are unhoused, disenfranchised, and experiencing stress. May we all find support systems to help each other out and see that many are part of our communities. Prayers for Patricia's sister, Faye, as she continues to heal. God of justice and healing, hear our prayers. Pray, Lord, for Faye's recovery from surgery. Please let her get the support she needs when I'm gone. Prayers for healing. Praying in gratitude for Aki's brother. Successful surgery this past week. Hopefully only two more weeks in the hospital. Prayers of gratitude for the support and love we have received from this congregation. God of healing and of prayers themselves, hear our prayers. And prayers for the ministry Steve provides with the children of Hoover, Mary Lou and others also. God of caring, hear our prayers. So many prayers. So much good praying. God of love and God of justice, God of healing, God of mercy, God of movement and courage, God of peace, God who gives us what we need to make justice ourselves, not waiting for people who sometimes just don't ever make justice. Thank you that you are the one who hears our prayers. And you are the source of love and the bringer of all change. Be with us, God. Be with us as we pray for this community, for those who are sick, for those who might be shut in at home right now, for those who are grieving loss of family and friends, or loss in a life, an unexpected loss of position or idea, all of those are grief. Those feeling the weight of this world impacted by injustice, be with us also in our joys, in our gratitude, in our growth, in the ways that we show up for one another. Be with us as we try to be your people in a hurting world. Help us to be bringers of empathy and belonging where there is shame and disconnect. You have brought us this far, O oh God. Strengthen us to stand with and for each other in, e in even greater ways, with greater resolve. We trust in you, O oh God, the God of justice. We trust in the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. And we trust in Jesus, who is our teacher and our friend and our movement founder. And let us close prayer in the way that Jesus taught the disciples. And we say, our creator God, who is in heaven with us. We call upon your names, your wisdom come, your will be done, the spaces in which you dwell. Give us this day our sustenance and perseverance. Remind us of our limits as we give grace to the limits of others. Separate us from the temptations of empire and deliver us into community for you are the dwelling place within us, the empowerment around us, and the celebration among us now and forever. Amen. I'd also like to ask for prayers for all the people all over the world that are suffering from extreme weather conditions and fires. Thank you. Thank you for that.
today because the Holy Spirit is leading. So in a minute, Lynn is going to come forward to invite the offering. But before she does, I want you all to know that the Golden Gate Blue Society is, is, is giving its first ever Living Legend Award, and they are giving it to this woman, to Lady Bianca. So she's going to be honored at Freight and Salvage on Wednesday, August 16th. And said to me, and I burst out laughing, she said, I'm afraid nobody's going to come. <laughs> I think there may be a few people. <laughs> so the, I'll share more later, but the church is going to purchase a block of tickets. And if you want to go, just call me up. But yes, this living legend, thank you, Lady B, for blessing us. Everybody clap your hands. <laughs> I'm going to come. I'm calling her. I want to. Okay. My name's Lynn. Good morning, Plymouth family. Lynn, you have to be in the room. Okay. Is this better? Okay. Okay, when I was asked to share why I give, after a bit of reflection, I could distill it really down to just one word, hope. I know all of you, of course, have perfectly stress-free, uncomplicated <laughs> lives, no challenges at all. I've had a few bumps in my road. When I've spoken to Pastor Marge or Pastor Lois, be it about my cancer journey, my daughter's mental health problems, or the anxious waiting for the birth of my beautiful last granddaughter, Maya, I felt so seen, so heard. They didn't offer pat remedies or quick fixes, but they gave me hope. 
In Abraham Verghese's new novel, The Covenant of Water, Mariama describes a Christian hospital in Ethiopia by saying, faith in this institution is concrete, not abstract. At Plymouth, faith is concrete, not abstract. I'm old enough to proudly say I was a child of the 1960s. Yes, I even occasionally wore flowers in my very long hair. <laughs> I know this sounds dangerously hippy dippy, but after speaking to our pastors, and I'm sure this will be true of Pastor Jean as well, I almost feel surrounded by a physical aura of kindness, love, and support. I feel held, and then I'm reinvigorated to help hold others. That's why I give, and I ask you to give as generously as you're able. There are four ways to give in the bulletin today. You've heard this before, and you are welcome, or you're welcome to drop off a check or cash in the collection plate as you leave the sanctuary. Thank you. First reading today is from the parable is the parable of the sower from the gospel of Matthew chapter 13 verses 3 through 8 so hear now these words Jesus told them many things in parables saying a sower went out to sow and as he sowed some seeds fell along the path and the birds came and devoured them other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil and immediately they sprang up since they had no depth of soil but when the sun rose they were scorched and since they had no root they withered away other seeds fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked them yet other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Our second reading is a reflection on the parable of the sower by Reverend Steve Garnas Holmes. A person set out to live her life and she tried to get things right, but some things she got wrong. Some were good ideas, but they went badly. Sometimes she had good intentions, but they got choked out by her doubts and fears and bad habits. Sometimes she did good things, but they didn't make any difference or they went unnoticed. Sometimes she was misunderstood and ignored and she, she wondered if her life mattered at all, but she kept trying and the seeds of her trying bore fruit, some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. Here ends the reading. God still speaking to the people of the people. we 
wisdom. Pastor Gene Wolf. Oh my. That beautiful cantering, that powerful reading. Thank you, Pastor Gene and Lynn. That that powerful, heartfelt invitation to give. Thank you, Lynn. That music, that music. So dear ones, by the time we meet him in today's scripture in this 13th chapter from the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus has done some stuff. He done some stuff. He has chosen his disciples. He has preached the Beatitudes. He has healed some folk and worked some miracles. He's calmed a storm. He's, he's. <laughs> he's facilitated communication <laughs> between David and Yoki. He's, he's calmed a storm, restored a little girl to life healed a woman who's been bleeding for 12 years, restored sight to not one but two blind people. He's started gaining, I'm just gonna wait. I used to say this when I was a middle school teacher, I'll wait. Okay. So Jesus has started gaining quite a reputation, quite the following among the folk who live near the Sea of Galilee. One day he goes out to sit by the water and he sort of gets mobbed. He gets surrounded by this huge crowd. So he does this, this kind of interesting thing. He gets into a boat that pulls out a little way from the shore. And while this big crowd of people stands on the beach, he speaks to them from the boat. He makes the boat a sort of lectern. And Jesus, whom his followers called rabbi, which means teacher, begins to teach the people. He, he began to teach them about God and about love and about themselves. And since those are all such big subjects, right? God and love and human nature, or the complexities of human nature, he had to find a way to, to break it down. He had to find a way to make it plain had to find a way to keep it simple. So he told them stories, short stories with lots of symbolism and similes and metaphors and analogies. These short stories, these parables as we call them, were one of Jesus's favorite teaching tools. And in this 13th chapter of Matthew, he tells a bunch of these parables, but he starts with this one the parable of the sower. A sower went out to sow, he began. Some versions say a farmer went out to scatter seed. Sowing means scattering. Now, now we would expect, or maybe I would expect, because, you know, I'm tidy about these things. We would expect Jesus to, or we would expect the farmer, this sower, to be a little more strategic than this you know, to take some time to prepare the soil, to till it, to 
aerated. I have no idea what aerate means, but our dear Chauncey Roberts uses that word, so it sounds good to me. Aerate the soil. Anyway, we would expect this farmer to have a strategy, but this farmer is just scattering seed wildly, just scattering it all over the place on rocky ground and thorny ground, you know, um, scattering on, on, the, on the pathways that get a lot of foot traffic, and yes, scattering it on some good soil as well, because you see, in the traditional interpretation of this scripture, this parable, the farmer, the sower of all this seed, the person scattering, the being scattering all this seed, that, that's God, that's God. And the seed is God's love, what God scatters with such abandon, all that love. And the soil, the ground, is you and me and all of us. And what Jesus is inviting us to consider is what kind of soil, what kind of ground we want to be for God's love. Sometimes we are rocky ground for God's love. There have been times in my life when I was rocky ground for God's love. Has that ever happened to you? Poor God must have been like, who child, please. <laughs> Sometimes we are thorny ground for God's love. There have been times in my life when I was all thorn and no rose, when I was so wounded and my defenses were so high that I was just choking out everything that God planted. Sometimes, sometimes we're good ground for God's love. And the things that God is trying to accomplish through us really have a chance to take root and flourish. So that's one interpretation of the parable. God is the sower and we are the soil. But the lovely thing about parables is that they can have more than one meaning, more than one interpretation. In fact, there's a spiritual exercise, it may be one of the exercises of St. Ignatius, but I can't remember for certain. There's, there's an exercise that invites us to read the parable in a more playful way, to try on each part or character in the story. For example, what do you learn from the story? How does it, it speak to you differently if you imagine yourself not as the soil, but as the sower? as the one who is scattering the seed. In the reading that Lynn shared with us, the second reading, we are the sower, all of us, we are the sower, not God, little old you and little old me. We are the sower scattering the seed. And those words from the Gospel of Matthew, a sower went out to sow, get interpreted in our second reading as a person set out to live her life. A person set out to live her life. And she tried to get things right, but some things she got wrong, it says. Have you ever started out with a good idea and some good intentions, but things just didn't work out the way you hoped? Has that ever happened to you? Raise your hand, or if you don't want to raise your hand, you can raise it in your spirit. Just tell it to God. <laughs> David said just now. <laughs> Amen, David. <laughs> but have, have you ever started out? <laughs> that was funny, Dami Day. <laughs> have you ever started out like in a new relationship? or in a new job, or just some new venture, and, and, and things just kind of crumbled. <laughs> but things crumbled, things fell apart. Maybe something even blew up in your face. In the second reading, God is not the sower, we are the sower, and God is the resilience. God is the power, the force, the energy, the courage, the love that picks us up and brushes us off. There's an old jazz song, pick yourself up, brush yourself off, start all over again. 
but God is the force and the energy and the power that blesses us to do that, blesses us to start all over again, blesses us to keep trying, to keep sowing. God is the resilience. And so the reading says that this person, she kept trying, they kept trying, we keep trying, and the seeds of our trying, it says, eventually bear fruit. They eventually produce something good and worthwhile because God, God is a great ecologist. God wastes nothing. God can take the compost of our lives and turn it into, I don't know, I'm not a farmer, uh, turn it into, you, you plant stuff, Pastor Gene. God will take the compost of our lives and turn it into sweet potatoes or something. So I want to close today by sharing a little story. We had a member of this church, a gifted, beloved member of this church who left us too soon, who left us at age 31. Some of you will remember Lawrence Lyons, beautiful, proud, gay, black man, poet, activist, intellectual, amazing singer, a classically trained tenor and a gifted gospel singer. A few months before he died, Lawrence called me up one day and he said, Pastor, I love it when we say the be still at the start of every service, but do you think we could switch it up sometimes and sing it instead of say it? which struck me as a lovely idea, but I had no idea how to sing it. So Lawrence recorded this little arrangement and texted it to me. And I believe he sang it for us at least one time, mm -hmm. at least one time before he died. And after he died, we, we didn't sing it for a while. And then I asked Brother Stephen Mark Thomas and I asked Shell to, to sing it for us occasionally. And they did that. But it was hard to hear it without crying. So we stopped. And then this past Tuesday, at the start of the church council meeting, little Ario Easley, almost four years old, Ario Ronan Easley, sang Lawrence's arrangement of the Be Still. Okay, I'm going to do this without tears, but Stephen may have to come up and help me. Be still and know that God is God. Be still and know that God is. Be still and know. Be still and know. Be still. Be. Of course, Ariel sang it once and then turned to his mommy and said, I do it again. And he sang it for us a second time. <laughs> the song has outlived our Lawrence. The song, the seed that he sowed, got planted in Ario and Stephen and Shell and you and me and this church, all of us. The good things we sow outlive us. They outlive us and bear fruit because God is in the seeds of our trying. God is the resilience and God is the resurrection. Be still and know. We come now to the communion table, the table of grace, where the Holy One is the host, and we are all the Holy One's welcome guests. 
As we gather here, we remember the night that Jesus gathered with his friends for the Passover meal, how he sat with them at the table, and he took the bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it. And then he passed it around to all of them, saying, take and eat. This is like my body, which will be broken. And then after the supper, Jesus took the cup and he blessed it. And he passed it around to all his friends. And he said to them, take and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant, the covenant of love. And he told them, when you eat of this bread and when you drink of this cup, remember me. For those of you who are with us on Zoom, I hope that you were able to gather bread or crackers, juice or water. For those who are here in the sanctuary, what we'll do is we'll receive communion after the service. And for now, I invite you just to pantomime with us, to do the gestures with us. Those of you at home can actually take the bread or crackers in your hands. I invite you to, to take the bread and Pastor Jean, you can just one piece will do. Just take the bread. So hold the bread in one hand. Let's do this. Let's pantomime this. We're holding the bread in one hand. And then you put your other hand above it. And I invite you to say this with me. This is a gift of God's good earth. It is blessed. I am blessed. And now if you're on Zoom, you can set the bread or crackers down. Those of us here in the sanctuary imagine that we're setting it down too. And then we'll take the cup and we're gonna say those same words. We're gonna pantomime again. And we hold it in one hand and put a hand of blessing above it. And we say, this is a gift of God's good earth. It is blessed. I am blessed. Amen, amen. Family on Zoom, you should go ahead and receive the gifts that you have blessed. Family here in the sanctuary will receive communion in the courtyard in just a bit. But this is the welcome table. And these are the gifts of God for each and all of us, the people of God. And now we're going to rise, those of us here in the sanctuary, we're going to close, we're going to form our closing circles So come out into the aisles and we'll make a big circle. Everyone on Zoom, imagine that you're right here in our midst and you are standing in this circle too, but you have communion gifts that you're receiving. So let's all rise, we'll make a big circle. We sing a blessing song to each other as we close worship. There you go, just close that circle. You have to gather around somebody. And we sing this sort of jamming version. We used to sing a sedate version and we kind of got over that. May the blessing of God rest upon you. May the start dropping hands and just like dance as we sing that just dance <laughs>
So before, before I offer the benediction, um, just a couple of reminders. Tomorrow night, Monday night is Monday night jazz. Be there or be square. Larry Noble is the featured artist tomorrow night. It is seven o'clock. And We're David is in the fireside room. room yeah. Oh, okay. A lot of people have requested that. So. Okay, we okay. miss the intimacy of the fireside room. Okay, so it'll be in the fireside room, not in the sanctuary, everyone. So come for Monday night jazz. We had a little boy who we were having a Saturday meeting. He dragged his dad here into the sanctuary because he thought there was going to be music. He was like, I come from Monday Night Jazz. Surely there's some music up in that church. Um, so there is that. And then the last reminder is Lady B's August 16th event, Living Legend. You can see me if you want a ticket or you can go straight to the Freight and Salvage website. So, you can put yourself in every role in the story. Lay a hand on yourself. Say, I am the sower. I am the seed. I am the soil. I am blessed. God is the resilience. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, dear ones, but don't go far. Come out and have communion and then have some cake because we're carbo loading for Christ. <laughs> Hi, everyone. There's a song uh, that's been a standard for mm, over 90 years. <laughs> 1931, a musical called The Bandwagon. <clears throat> Bing Crosby recorded it, became a quick hit. Later, Arnie Shaw recorded it, became a bigger hit in the late 30s. Here it's called, here it is called Dancing in the Dark. We're dancing in the dark. Till the tune ends, we're dancing in the dark, and it soon ends, we're waltzing in a wonder of why we're here, time hurries by, we're here and gone, looking for the light of a new love, to brighten up the night, I have you love, and we can face the music together. For night and day, you are the one. Only you beneath the moon and under the sun. Whether near to me or far, no matter, darling, where you are, I think of you. Boom, in the silence of my lonely room, I think of you. Night and day, night and day, under the hide of me, there's an oh such a hungry yearning, burning inside of me, and it's for me, whatever be through, and you let me spend my life making love. Dancing in the Dark to Night and Day. <laughs> Out both songs. Okay, folks, you know, now it's time to say goodbye.
to all our family. B L Y M O U T H Q C C. Five, four, three, 